voters and public officials choose police reform in moderation after George Floyd's murder. CNN anti-police candidates and a policing overhaul referendum were rejected on Election Day in Seattle, Minneapolis, and Buffalo, continuing a trend of voters and public officials choosing moderate and measured approaches to policing over sweeping or radical changes. The debate over every issue related to law enforcement has played out in city councils and state legislatures across the country since George Floyd died under the knee of a Minneapolis police officer last spring, setting off the largest protest movement in American history. Protests and unrest in response to Floyd's death have shaped local and national politics since. A policy favored by protesters was cutting spending on law enforcement, with proposals that ranged from gradual shift of law enforcement funding to social services to outright abolition of police departments and the role police play in America. In cities where defunding the police was up for discussion on Tuesday, voters rejected the notion. Since Floyd's murder, reform to law enforcement has been more tailored to local concerns. The set of circumstances Tuesday and the role of safety in the election reflected a hierarchy of needs situation, said Mark A. Smith, professor of politics at the University of Washington. Without dependable public safety, it's hard to have a lot of the other things, he said. It's hard to have a lot of the other things. Election results continue a trend. In Buffalo, the sitting mayor was re-elected by a write-in campaign after he lost the Democratic primary to a defund the police socialist and Seattle voters elected a mayor who pressed for more officers over a candidate who pledged to slash police spending in half. In Minneapolis voters rejected a plan that would have opened the door to a sweeping law enforcement overhaul by eliminating the city police minimum staffing requirement and giving the city council greater control of law enforcement efforts. They also re-elected the city's mayor, who refused to commit to abolishing the police. Instead, he said he wanted to ensure an integrated approach to public safety, hire more community-oriented officers, build safety beyond policing, and get serious about reform on a multi-jurisdictional level. Republicans use defund to paint Democrats as soft on crime, and President Joe Biden told Georgia Democrats that Republicans use defund the police to beat the living hell out of Democrats in November elections last year. Prominent Democrats have since called defund a mistake. That sentiment has proven to be pretty unpopular across the country, Smith said. Even in Minneapolis, the sight of Derek Chauvin killing George Floyd, it couldn't even pass there. You could tell even in 2020 some of the disorder, homelessness, rising murder rates, people were noticing that and looking for an outlet and how to express it, he said. You could tell even in 2020 some of the disorder, homelessness, rising murder rates, people were noticing that and looking for an outlet and how to express it. In cities and states all over, elected officials have taken slower or less sweeping steps that don't drastically alter the role of law enforcement in America since Floyd's death. Tuesday's election results were a continuation of that trend. In some states, attorneys general are conducting investigations into local police departments modeled after federal pattern and practice investigations that look for ways to reform policing. Some cities are looking to alter or limit the role of police in calls relating to mental health or substance abuse. Mayors, city councils, governors, and state legislatures have all had opportunity to dismantle, defund, or otherwise overhaul policing through budgets or other normal government deliberations. Few public officials were as vocal as those in Minneapolis, where nine of the city's 13 city councilors pledged to dismantle the police department last summer after a week of protests and unrest in the city. Voters there had their first chance to weigh in on a concrete policing proposal on Tuesday a ballot measure that would have made it easier for the city council to overhaul policing by eliminating a staffing requirement and giving the council executive control of the police. Minneapolis residents rejected the measure by a 12-point margin and re-elected Jacob Frey, the city's mayor, who opposed the plan to dismantle the police department. The ballot measure itself was the product of more than a year of litigation and other bureaucratic fighting and didn't go as far as elected officials had promised. That was a city where there was wide agreement among city officials that policing needed some change. I think part of it is some reality testing, said Chuck Wexler, director of the nonpartisan police executive research forum. People are saying look, we want to change the police, but you know we also got a violent crime issue, we have a domestic violence issue, then there's a need to reform American police departments. I think you can do that, but I think what people are saying is, let's do it in a responsible way. Let's involve the community, let's educate the police, let's hire better, let's train better, let's supervise better, but at the same time you've got a significant crime issue and you can't ignore that. 
the mayoral race in Seattle was between two candidates who were both city councilors, were both racial minorities, had similar funding, and had similar name recognition going into the race, Smith said. Where they differed was policing. Seattle saw a spike in homicides last year after the protests and unrest in late May and early June. This year's total, through the first half of the year, matched last year's. Seattle, like other West Coast cities, has seen an increase in homelessness and some public parks taken over by homeless encampments. And in June and July last year, protesters took over a six-block area of the city Caledth Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. It followed protests, unrest and looting in Seattle and elsewhere after Floyd's death. Mayoral candidate Lorena Gonzalez was one of seven to support cutting Seattle police spending by 50 percent. Bruce Harrell was not. It's as clean a test as you normally get of candidates' messages and platforms and Gonzalez and Harrell are running on different things," Smith, the professor, said. It's as clean a test as you normally get of candidates' messages and platforms and Gonzalez and Harrell are running on different things. The mayoral election in Seattle wasn't the only one where policing was central to the race, voters there have nearly elected a Republican city attorney over a public defender opposed to prosecuting most misdemeanor charges. The projected losing candidate, Nicole Thomas Kennedy, had also called officers pigs and serial killers, and her campaign manager called the city's police chief, a black woman, an Uncle Tom, expletive. Even in Seattle where Republicans are not popular, between a Republican or Nicole Thomas Kennedy, Seattle said we'll take the Republican and that's remarkable, Smith said. In Buffalo, Mayor Byron Brown declared victory on Tuesday in his campaign for a fifth term against Democratic Socialist India Walton who won the primary earlier this year. Walton, who secured 41 percent of the votes, had called for redirecting $7.5 million from the Buffalo Police Department's budget. Brown has accused Walton of seeking to defund the police, a term that she has distanced herself from. Walton's public safety policy agenda was geared toward addressing the root causes of violence rather than heavier policing and punishment after violence occurs, according to her agenda. She describes her approach as evidence-based, data-driven, and founded on proven practices in Buffalo and elsewhere. In an interview with CNN before early voting began, Brown said the stakes would be dire and extreme if Walton were elected, adding that she would dare an extreme, 